As the Trump Ukraine scandal unfolded in September of 2019, ultimately leading to the first impeachment of President Donald J. Trump, the LA Loyola in election 2020 team held its first meeting. Now, in the aftermath of Trump's second impeachment, we look back at this election cycle. In September of 2019, all anyone could think about was the impeachment, you know, the first impeachment. And it really seemed like the story of the decade, you know, the Watergate of our generation. And so that ended up being our first uh, E20 fund with you. Uh, but little did we know everything that would happen since. Major climate strikes took place globally on the last two Fridays of September. While the climate change rallies that happened at the beginning of the school year in 2019 happened at the beginning of E2020's initiative, I think it really set us up um, with our goal moving forward, which was to provide coverage from the angle of the college age demographic because those rallies were really led by the youth. Um, it was when, uh, you know, the big climate marches launched by Greta Thunberg and at that point, it felt like, you know, young people politics was at a reckoning. Just being there recording that for, for that made me feel like this is probably the start of something. Then in early November, we struck luck. It took flying to DC and sneaking through the kitchens of an event hall, but we got our first interview with the presidential contender, Julian Castro. Everyone who cares about a strong democracy here in the United States to encourage voter participation. And before we knew it, E2020 had taken off. Getting an interview with Maxine Waters was probably my personal highlight um, throughout the whole experience because it really just affirmed um, our role as journalists and student journalists because she literally rearranged her schedule just to be able to come back and get like a really quick 30 minute interview with us. Um, and she just made the time for us and that was really awesome. Then on November 8th, news broke. LMU would be hosting the sixth Democratic presidential debate. So that's when Cristobal and I from election 2020, and then Jacob, the editor in chief of the Loyola at the time, were able to actually go to the debate as journalists to be in the spin room and ask candidates about issues that students care about. For example, mental health. Uh, what are you gonna do to address students' mental illness problems? During the LMU DNC debate, we had the opportunity to interview plenty of journalists. Uh, one of them, Tommy Lauren, uh, actually retweeted the video of us talking to a bunch of different journalists uh, like Chris Cuomo, somebody from uh, CBS News. We talked to a photojournalist at the New York Times and you we were really gracious that you know she was able to retweet that for us because that got a lot of attention and a lot of uh, uh, shareability on Twitter. So that was really nice of her. But perhaps an even bigger story than the debate was when a week earlier, all seven candidates tweeted that they wouldn't attend the debate if it meant crossing the local union's picket line. And that's when the E2020 team was able to speak to the president of the union, to workers protesting, and to the chair of the Democratic National Committee, Tom Perez, about this issue which was of personal significance to LMU students. One of the biggest takeaways for me um, from this initiative has just been the importance of student journalists and the um, interesting angles that we can provide. Um, we might not have the access to resources that big news companies do, but we have our own perspectives and I think that's um, a huge benefit. Then all of a sudden, as students headed home for spring break, the world turned upside down. The number of people who've contracted the coronavirus continues to grow. President Trump had declaring a national emergency just a little while ago. But in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, E2020 continued to produce more content than ever before. So one of the most important video projects that I got to work on was the prop uh, video projects, where basically I talked about all the dozen different propositions on the California ballot. You know, propositions were something that I was aware of growing up in California for the time I was there, and I knew generally of the huge importance that they had on everyday life, like it's the reason why taxes are so impacted. and. Uh, getting to do these projects was a very entertaining experience. It was also the summer of the Black Lives Matter protests. And so we spoke to student leaders in the LMU community about what they were doing to promote racial justice. And then after months of anticipation, the election finally came. CNN projects Joseph R. Biden Jr. is elected the 46th president of the United States. Now, just days before the inauguration, watching the Capitol Hill riots, Trump's second impeachment, and polarization escalating around the country, 
Journalism feels more important than ever before. But that also means that there's so much more pressure to counter misinformation, present the facts, and do everything we can to preserve our democracy. So I think the three biggest takeaways of E2020 are essentially, you know, timing, timing, timing. Uh, and, you know, that's, those are my three biggest takeaways, timing, 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 because the news cycle changed so rapidly and so quickly that uh, it, it was hard to keep up sometimes, but uh, I think we did a pretty good job. I've really learned about and been inspired by the fact that collaboration um, is so important when it comes to news coverage and um, learning how to utilize everyone in a team's um, specific talents and input um, is really important to creating the best end product possible. As this chapter of our journalism careers comes to a close, we want to thank Loyola Marymount University and the Los Angeles Loyola for supporting this once in a lifetime experiential learning environment. We also want to thank Tom Nelson and Carol Costello for their invaluable mentorship and guidance. And most of all, to those of you who have been with us on this journey of 130 episodes, thank you for watching.